We have this plan to go to this special place and we'll show you it in a minute. But first, we need to go get breakfast. Okay, we've arrived at our breakfast location. We're going to a place called The Wooden Chair. Um, me and Noble went there once and it was really good. So I'm taking Ellie. You've been there though, haven't you? Yeah, once in okay. college. Yeah, but it's really yummy. So we're gonna go eat breakfast. This place is really cool because it was the building was built in 1891 and it used to be a bank but most of this um, wood paneling is original and the brick wall and they also have a fireplace that's still original um, otherwise they have a lot of antiques it's just it's a really cool place this um, the restaurant first opens its doors in 1991 nope 1993 something else that you might not think about but it's true when you come in here this place has only wooden chairs to sit on Breakfast was eaten and now we have to go to our special surprise place. It'll take us an hour, so off we go. We didn't get very far before this happened. You'll have to let us know if there's ever like train stops like this because we've never seen them now that I think about it. Yeah, I haven't either. But they're very common in the U.S., especially around where we live right now, or like in Stevens Point, because we have a big train yard. Here. Where did we end up? So, we are at Warren's Cranberry Festival. Fresh festival, there's my burger. And they were advertising on the radio that they had a bunch of craft markets and vendors, which we're not really interested in, um, but we'll probably walk through. You can walk through a cranberry bog, and then they have all these types of cranberry-themed wine, candles, soaps, and stuff that like that. Stuff. So we're really excited, because I've never walked through a can cranberry bog before. So yes. Wisconsin is also famous for producing cranberries. So here we go. We'll see what happens. So we just finished our tour of the Cranberry Bog. It was super duper cool. We didn't get to go walk in it, although maybe we could have, but we learned an absolute lot. Fun. So first of all, um, when like Native Americans lived in the lands, they saw that these cranberries and they would eat them. And they were usually in like swampier areas where there was peat. And peat is a special type of like decaying soil um, or decaying vegetation. And so cranberries would survive there because from the heat that the peat would produce, they would survive year round, and that's how you could get cranberries. But otherwise, cranberries are actually rather sensitive to um, frost. It will kill them. Nowadays, they don't use peat, they used to, but they put sand in them, and they can grow in sand. They flood it with water and try to get a foot of ice so that the cranberry can still live below the ice in the water during the winter. But um, we also learned that they have planters, and the old varieties, they can just go on reproducing cranberries forever basically, but kind of like old vehicles, you need to get a new car once in a while because it's not as efficient. So like your berry plant isn't as efficient anymore. So they have these new special varieties and they're quite expensive and they can produce 
400 to 600 barrels per acre and a barrel is a hundred pounds of cranberries. cranberries. That's quite a lot of cranberries. It's something the newer versions are uh, cranberry plants are like five to six times more efficient. Yeah. So they get five to six times the yield for the same area. The old ones would give you like a hundred barrels per acre. Mm -hmm. And so like we said this year they even showed us an area where they planted the new hybrid style cranberries and he says these plants usually take around two to three years to get to like full production so they won't harvest them next year but they will the year after and they'll be at about a third of their normal efficiency and then every mm -hmm. year after that they expect them to be doing about five to six hundred <laughs> barrels per acre mm -hmm. or something like that and to harvest them is actually very cool that how they do it and so they have ponds nearby the bogs and they pump the water from the ponds into a bog to just where it's like covering over the top of the cranberry bush and these bushes are only like a foot high so they're not actually that tall and then they use a special little tractor thing with what looks little kind of tongs. like yeah tongs are kind of like a really wide fork with a mm -hmm. lot of like teeth type things and they go through the cranberry bush and these teeth will knock the cranberries off the bushes naturally without harming them and um, we even asked them the tractor itself doesn't even harm the plants even though it's like driving over them i mean it does a, I mean, a, a little bit it squishes some of the berries yeah. maybe but not but like, not enough to like kill most of the plants so they actually it's on tracks right so because of the tracks it's actually like very um okay for the plants and then once they've gone through and gotten all the cranberries knocked off of the vines they raise the water level even higher so that they all start floating and then they wait for the wind to push the cranberries all into like a corner whatever corner the wind decides it's going to be so then with the once the wind has pushed the cranberries over to a corner they bring a machine around it looks like kind of like an elevator to that corner and then the guys use these skimming buoys to kind of push the cranberries towards the elevator and then the elevator uses a combination of pumps and other things to kind get of looks like a vacuum yeah it kind looks like an underwater vacuum and so it kind of sucks the cranberries down into it where there's a conveyor belt and then it brings them up to a new machine and that machine um somehow i didn't either he, either he didn't really say or i didn't hear him say it but somehow it sorts out any debris like mm -hmm. leaves or dead berries and that goes into one truck and then the like fresh good berries go into another truck and i learned that the berries are mostly frozen within 24 hours so they don't really last long after they've been picked Mm -mm. And we also found out there's this thing in the U.S., or in Wisconsin at least, called Craisin. It's like a raisin, but it's um, a cranberry. Both cranberries. So it's like a dried cranberry smushing. Um, and that happens, you remember that, after... Yeah, they get the Craisins because along the cranberries that we saw today are specifically grown for juice. And so after they squish them to get all the juice out, they're left with like the shell. And it turns out you can then re-moisturize the shell in whatever kind of flavoring you want so like that it absorbs the sugar and the flavors or grape craisins yeah, there's or whatever. things like that and then they um dry cherry them back out and so now you have dried cr uh cranberry shells and we call them craisins so they're just like raisins and i actually really love craisins i always think they're delicious and they're really great to like chew on and they make really good like trail hiking food you know this is the perfect festival for you because you also at thanksgiving we typically have cranberry relish and lucas loves cranberry relish that's his True. favorite thing me not so much but yeah so that's um how cranberries are grown and harvested it's actually kind of simple but very cool i'm never gonna grow old of doing this um so we have decided that we wanted to try their cranberry ice cream but on the way to do that i told them i made this promise to myself that I, everything I eat today I want to be cranberry because we're at a cranberry festival and I don't have this opportunity much. I don't want, you know, like a normal funnel cake or something you can get every day. So, I got a cranberry chicken salad sandwich and Lucas got a cranberry pulled, a cranberry barbecue pulled pork sandwich. This is quite large. We could have just split a sandwich. Here we go. Does it taste like cranberries? I need a napkin. Yummy. How is it? I wanted a bite. <laughs> 
feeds the camera. You don't like it? I kind of taste the cranberries. I don't know if I really do. I do in here. Mm -hmm. It's good. If you ever come to the Warren's Cranberry Festival, you should come to the Cranberry Discovery Center. That's where we are because they have cranberry themed products and on the other side they have cranberry themed food. So we have um, our two sandwiches from there and they also have their ice cream over there. So it's much more local, I guess, you know, much more fit to the festival as where the other stuff outside is like your typical fair. It's time to go home. The van is hot, so this will be short, but we are done with our little fair Extra cranberry fancy. fest. And we didn't buy anything, and I'm happy to say that we didn't, except for food. Um, it would have been cool to find like more of cranberry stands, but mm -hmm. this is more honestly fair themed, which I wasn't yeah. really looking forward to. To me, it was worth it to come just to tour the cranberry bog. Yeah, that was cool. It, uh... I, I'm pretty sure it's like this every year, but I've never been here. Neither of us have, so we didn't really know. But this really was more like, you know, everyone in this small little town takes advantage of this big fair to, you know, sell... T-shirts, sweatshirts. Yeah, things like that. Garage sales. You know, just kind of cool things, but like not anything we need. Where it wasn't like really cranberry themed, to be really honest. Yeah. It was, there were only like two, three buildings that were really geared towards the idea of cranberries at all and uh, you can tell because that they're the only ones they run out of some of the cranberry themed foods and stuff very quickly like we didn't get to try cranberry ice cream and we were on the look for that we stopped at like three different booths mm -hmm. and they're all sold out like yeah. the main ones too yeah they really only have a single building that's like in charge of being cranberry themed so like of course they're gonna run out fast and stuff and today's technically the second day so it's, it's just the third and last Oh, third? Mm -hmm. Ah, yeah. It was Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Ah, and okay. they start harvesting tomorrow. Yeah, which is cool. Yeah. We like, that was our favorite part. So if you ever are traveling through Wisconsin around the last weekend of September, this is maybe something you want to check out just for the cranberry stuff. Yeah. I feel like maybe Ocean Spray store would have more. Like, there were, like, cranberry candles and cranberry lotion, but really only in that one store. Yeah. And I would have liked to have seen more. But well, now we can go off home. Now we know how cranberry bog works. Yeah. And, so, if you don't remember anything, remember cranberries do not grow in water. That's used to get them off the plant. That's not how they grow. Remember that. <laughs> Mark! They have all, like cranberry themed products and items and god I stumbled. <laughs>